close my window and get everything set up. Sorry, guys. Quiet, please, pups. All right, this should be pretty good. All right. How's everyone going? Thank you. It's darker than I thought it would be, Carrie, so I'm still getting used to it. Hi, Caroline. Or is it Carolyn? Caroline. Um, it's been one of those. Hi, Andrea. Sorry. Hopefully the dogs will stop barking. Hi. Was it Esteph? I couldn't see it. Hi, Maze Max. It has been one of those days where nothing goes right. So my apologies. I'm a little disheveled. But we are going to have fun today. Let me turn my volume down and find this video and I can see. Bonjour, Nazanin, how are you? I'm so happy to see you in the text, in the chat. All right, Tomas, hello. Caroline, yes. Estefany, hello. Alexandra from Luxembourg, hello. On time, I'm, <laughs> um, I didn't have time to eat. So excuse me while I munch on a cheese stick. Amina, hello, Amina. Hi, Aunt Anna from Sweden. Jerry, uh, Jelly Terry, hello. Samia, hello. North Anita, hello guys. Chandra, hello. It's so fun to see people. I know you guys are busy, so thanks for being here for as long as you can be. Bangladesh, for real dogs, please stop. So sorry. I'm trying to eat. We just had the, the air conditioning heater repair person come. Now we have some central heat conditioner, so I'm happy about that. But um, my dogs are on edge because having a visitor always makes things interesting. Macaron maker, hello. Hello, ciao from Rome. Okay, so don't worry, you. <laughs> Nazanin had two macarons for lunch. I'm a little disheveled, and if you can hear, my kids are having a hard day too. If you can hear Isla screaming in the background. So, it's been an unfortunate morning. This might go down. Not your fault, macaron maker. Not your fault. You're so sweet, though. Hien, hello. I wish the rest of my family was up for saying hi. We have had a rough start to the day. But we are going to have fun. Hopefully this is fun. So we've got... Here we go. Let's get into it. Hello, Dora. How's it going? We are doing popsicle macarons. So I made this, it's like miniature. They're a little thin, so I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna like it. But um, if you are part of the newsletter, you got this template. And um, I'm gonna make these. I was thinking that I would x the popsicle sticks today, just because I'm gonna do white macarons and then we're going to do that um, mixing our color with some extract, kind of like that watercolor effect. And we're going to 
paint it at the end to make it look like a rainbow um, popsicle from childhood. If you got my newsletter, there was like an inspo picture, which I really liked, or inspir inspiration picture. So at one point I got these tiny little popsicle sticks and they were the wrong size for my cakesicles. So they're perfect for this. I'm just gonna do one at the end, I think, and put it right in the middle. So once they're baked, I'll put these guys on when I'm sandwiching them together. So they'll be on a popsicle stick, but it's not gonna be a macaron popsicle today. So you could do either, you could do your batter at the um, for the popsicle sticks, but today I'm gonna use one single one because the mini popsicle template is just a little bit too small for two side by side on this one. How long can you store macaron shells? It depends on your freezer and how good your freezer is, but like in good conscience, good conscience, and if you're trying to sell them, uh, I would say two weeks ahead of time and you could fill at any point and freeze them. You could um, freeze just the shells or with the filling. I would just be careful with things that are like pastry cream and such. Those kind of leach out liquid and they're not the best fillings to fill your macarons with if you plan to freeze them or not sell them right away or eat them right away if you don't sell. Okay. Let's do this. Are we ready? I'm gonna do a small batch today. Um, happy that you're here, Nina. Oh yay, this was the first live for you, right Nina? Thanks for being here. Um, how long, yes, looking forward to doing this. Ooh, ice cream, that's a great idea. Someone, uh, Nazanin said she's gonna fill hers with ice cream. I don't have I wanted to try out these Chef Rubber flavors that I got, so I want to make like maybe a champagne mango or champagne blood orange, like a mimosa filling buttercream with these fillings, but they don't really go with rainbow popsicle macarons, so I might just make later a mango um, buttercream for these popsicle sticks. Popsicle sticks for these popsicles. But since I already had some cookies and cream buttercream, I wanted to get this out to soften just to, so you guys can visualize them on a stick. So we have some filling prepared, but I wanna do most of them with a filling I haven't had time to make yet. So I think like a more summery, fun flavor would be fun for these or ice cream, actual ice cream like Nazanin is doing. And then I've got all my colors for later when we do the painting. I'm gonna do it quickly. I might even only do one. And I've got the red, all the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet or purple. And I'll just kind of mix them in each of these with extract. You can either use any clear extract, so lemon or almond, but just know it will flavor your shell a little bit. So if you wanna go, like if you wanna go super, um, if you're not making a lemon macaron, I wouldn't use lemon extract. If you want almond extract, I think that's great because it's already, um, it's already pairs nicely with your almond cookie. But you can also use alcohol, um, really high proof vodka. I just don't have that in my house. Or you can use water, but I would be really, really careful. Michelle's Macarons has a really cool um, way of doing water and your gel paste color or liquid food gel, um, liquid gel, nope, just liquid <laughs> coloring. Anyways, check out Watercolor Macarons by Michelle's Macarons and she does these beautiful florals with water and it works. Um, I'm just always nervous to make it super saturated and ruin my shells. So I don't use water, but it's possible as shown by Michelle. So I'm gonna use almond today. Thank you. Okay, guys, I've said a lot. Let's get started. I'm doing a small batch, and I think I said everything I want to say about what we're doing. Now let's actually do it. Did the wedding. 
already happened. No, the wedding is this weekend. So we've got that happening. I've got to drive my kiddos six hours, but I'm excited to see some family. Okay. We've got six, I'm doing a 65% batch. So I multiplied my base recipe by 0.65. So everything is, so instead of 100 grams of egg whites, I'm using, oh, I gotta drop this down. I'm using 65 grams of egg whites. And then 59 grams of sugar and about 84 to 85 grams of confectioner sugar and almond flour. Let me move you guys down so you can see me mixing them. I'm gonna just use my hand mixer because this is a small batch. Um, I know, I, I wish my husband could come with us, but he can't. Okay, there we go. Laureen, hello. It's Stephanie. I will definitely let you know if I do a virtual class. I'm gonna, it's all nice and foamy. I'm gonna put in my sugar in two additions. Hi, Jill. white it's not foamy anymore feel it if you don't feel any granules you're ready to boost up your speed second speed Ah, 
Zoe that point five team. Congratulations on your first wedding order. We're getting close. will be frozen <coughs> when I travel <coughs> and I don't think so because of the humidity I'm traveling to like a 90 degree area Answer those questions on how long it takes to get to this peak. being kind and saying you can barely hear them in the background. Okay, we're at a nice stiff peak. Sorry. And then I would say on average it takes me about eight to ten minutes to get to a stiff peak, um, but I, I don't time myself very often. Um, but it really depends on the power of your mixer. I have some people with high wattage mixers that have come to stiff peaks in like five minutes. So it really depends on how much power your mixer has. If it's taking a really, really long time, for me at least when I've done um, trials with like slowly mixing my meringue up, I get really soft shells and I feel like it's taking too long. So if you tend to get soft shells, um, and or have an issue with a really long um, if you have an issue with it taking a long time to get to stiff peaks it could be a problem um, but I would say make sure your eggs are room temperature because they whip up faster that way and um, use a smaller mixer if you are using small batches like use a hand mixer if it's less than 100 grams Hello from Arkansas. I'm just going to slowly mix in my dries. And again, I'm just doing this white so we can color it after, okay? And I love that someone said, courage, uh, I need all the luck I can get. <laughs> you know me, I just prefer circles, circle designs. Champ multitasker Betty. 
I don't feel like it. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, with the hand mixer specifically. Got it. The wedding is in Northern California. Should be weird. I haven't been in a large crowd for a really long time, so. Okay. Oh, sorry. I can't read a t my dog's bark. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hopefully they won't bark anymore. Okay, so I'm just mixing in the dries and clean up. What a hard day. I don't know if you guys can hear my daughter crying. So a lot of people ask about white macarons, how to keep them white, since we're doing sort of white here without any coloring. You can see that it gets a little bit discolored. That meringue was so white and then you put the, the um, tan of the almond flour, the yellowness of the almond flour in there. Many people were, will offset that color with um, some violet to make it more white. That's never really worked for me. You can put titanium dioxide in it as well. The Sugar Art products, uh, they have a white that's basically titanium dioxide and so does Chef Master or I think they just sell titanium dioxide on Amazon. Um, so if you're a Prime member, you could get it without paying for shipping. But I find just using a little bit of either my Chef Rubber powdered white, which is titanium dioxide, or the um, Sugar Art white works really well. Or actually, I'll show you guys one second. I'm almost there. I really like Ash by Americolor, and I feel like it had a little bit of a violent tint, and it works really nicely to equalize that yellowish. Let me go get the Ash color for you so you can see. Almost there. can't find it right now so we're just gonna say it. I'll look for it later I don't think I have it anywhere else but really it's all about your oven that's the main thing when you're trying to do white max I don't change the temperature I'll sometimes bake a little bit less to keep that crisp white but um, you might need to change like the rack positioning or put parchment over your macarons towards the end of the baking process to keep it from browning too much. Okay. Alicia's here too. Okay guys, we're almost there. Again, this is a 65% recipe. 65% of my 100 gram of egg whites recipe. That's about where I wanna be. And if you still feel like you're getting super, um, there we go, super tan color when you're trying to get white, you could try a different almond flour. That's where I like. You can also, after you see that it's flowing off your spatula pretty consistently and like not too fast, it's not thin yet. It has some structure still, but it will um, meld into the, down here, if you see it's kind of blending into the main lump of batter, I guess. So it takes about 20 seconds to kind of blend in, kind of like your royal icing consistencies, you know, like how you count how long it takes to blend in, and that's how you can tell. So you want it to be about 20 seconds until it melds in, 
and then you'll be you'll know it'll kind of even out when you're piping. So I have a coupler and a tip today. If you are doing different designs and only using one color, I really suggest a coupler so then you don't have to use multiple piping bags. Then if like you have a part like these popsicle sticks where you need it to be thinner, you can just switch out your tip instead of having to grab a whole nother bag. Let's see how this, I do this. I really wanted to do these beforehand once so I could have them ready to paint, but life happens. Okay, thank you, Macaron Maker. All right, let's check this out. Never done this. So I'm just going to kind of outline. can't really say much about the like how I'm doing this but because I haven't done it before so I don't really know what works best to get that divot at the top from the template so I'm just gonna kind of go down and then back up oops you guys couldn't even see that okay let me bring you down There we go. When you're doing shapes, it's nice to just do a few, see how you get the hang of it, and then kind of figure out what works best for you, and then do more, and go through and fill out the template using a scribe. So again, I'm not going to actually pipe the popsicles today, the popsicle sticks. So uh, we're gonna leave those for an actual popsicle stick at the end. All right, and um, if you wanted to though, like I was saying, with this is a coupler and you can undo that and then put a smaller tip in so you can finish those details with a different size tip without having to get a whole nother bag. All right, let's try this again. So I just kind of went down from the top and do my little rectangle and then down like that. Do a little bit bigger. Do a couple, get your scribe. This is always, this, these are gonna be a lot thinner than my normal max. It depends on how you usually pipe, so it might not be a difference for you. But if you're using a smaller tip, a lot of the times they'll be thinner. So just know that they'll bake a little bit faster. So watch that time. So I'm trying to get like a little bit of an indent like you get on the popsicles. And that's why I am not bringing the batter all the way up to the top. This is when I wish I had more patience. Okay. They look just like weird blobs right now.
How's everyone doing? It's so quiet in the chat. Hello from Bulgaria. Now we're gonna do no rest here as well. So I have my airbag tray here. You wanna make sure it fills out the template just because you wanna be able to pair them with a matching one, of course. So make sure you stay in that template. I think a bigger one would be fun. Hello from um, Ottawa, hello. So how does no make? What is, sorry. What did you mean, Carrie? Yeah, Alicia, you have way more patience, I think, than I do. <laughs> um, right, Nazanin? Oh, I see that. Patience, what is it? I don't even know. So, let's see here. I'm gonna do one more. So we have, um, I tried the no rest and half cracked. Too much steam in the oven. It could definitely be be too much steam. Um, if you had a full tray, you could try venting your oven. Definitely. How you gonna tell me? Anyone? What is it, Olivia Rod? I forget her name now. Anyways, deja vu. I'm just blabbing on, no one's gonna even understand what I'm saying. All right, I'm just going for it now. There comes a point where I lose my patience completely and they start getting, um, exponentially worse. Do you guys do that? You're like, ah. Try not to cut off the batter too much when I'm piping. And by that I mean like, when you make it thinner and like you don't let the whole tip kind of come out. So try to let it bubble up and come all the way out and flow out so it doesn't get too thin. All right, let me just pat these bad boys out or tap them out and we can bake them and see. So we can paint them if they work and see if the vision and inspiration kind of pans out or if they look like really weird, just random shapes and not popsicles. Has anyone ever had this fun idea or you see something and uh, someone else do the macarons and you're like, yes, I'm gonna do that. And then it's like nailed it where you completely do not execute it how you wanted to. Yeah, that's me every time. From Italian. Uh... <laughs> I gotta read that. Messed up that one. Oh, I'm so sweaty, you guys. All right. Maybe at the end of this, my kids will stop screaming. All right, let's put it in. 
so excited to see the painting. Yeah, let's look into that. Here we go. I'm just going to put these into the oven. Let's see here. I can't hear my girls. I can hear. Yeah, I I understand the crazy loudness. I should probably do a little bit more, huh? But I want to just. Hello from Romania. I was grabbing popsicles from my. Oh. That's. Okay. Let's see here. You guys have some great questions. The size of that air bake tray. So here's my half sheet tray. Here's my air bake. So it's bigger than that. Don't judge me by that drawer, please. It is. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, about 20 inches across, and that's me doing math, so could be give or take two inches. And then by 13 and a half inches this way. So 20 by 13 and a half, maybe. All right, uh, let's see here. Um, Olivia Rodrigo. Yes, I, I'm enjoying her. Thank you, Caroline. It's on repeat. I know, it's such a catchy song. She has some good songs. Even the driver's license one, I can totally, like, get into. Takes me back to all the feelings of adolescence. Um, let's see here. Do you use reusable piping bags? Yes. These are the Italian known Also starts to sing. From time. I do love a song. Um, these are reusable, yeah. These are reusable piping bags. Sorry as I catch up. Hi from Romania. <laughs> Carrie, yeah, exactly. I mean this is why I like to show the live ones because you can see that I don't get them right on the first time many times. I am, especially when I, I'm no Alicia. I do not do the character macarons, so. Alicia, why don't you, I wish we could do like a zoom in on you right now doing something really cool. Let's see here. Tsunami. No, Hian, that was awesome. I Hian made this awesome macaron. I don't is are they called tsunami cakes? The cakes, you know that like you take off the sleeve and then they like pour out into like a Barbie dress or something like that. Hian did a macaron cake that did it, and I thought it was amazing. It was awesome. Eastern Pennsylvania, Eleanor. Hello. I'm like, um. I'm, can you guys tell that I am not wanting to do more of these? <laughs> but what if those ones don't turn out? So I think I should do more. Maybe the painting will save these too. Um, I saw, I think it's Victoria. From Vic it's like spell cool though. I think it's Victoria. Um, 
she's based in the UK and she has beautiful, beautiful photos of her macarons. Always great flavors. But I saw she did um, a popsicle recently, a, a popsicle mac. <laughs> Can I talk? And it was completely dipped in chocolate and it was just so beautiful. I loved that. That look was fun. And then you get like a little bit of the chocolate, the stick dipped in the chocolate. And so then you get your stick to be like reinforced as well. So your stick doesn't come out when someone bites into it. It's just, it's genius. It's a really good idea. Oh, I, I moved my template before I filled in. Whoopsies. Bummer, dude. character no rest never work yeah Alicia I mean you do super intricate character designs so I wonder if they're just like especially with the um, like wet on wet on dry batter I wonder if it's just not dry enough in those spots and not wet enough to fully like there's too much of a difference between the two different layers Does that make sense the batter Ugh, I wish I couldn't hear my kids screaming. Who thinks any of these are gonna turn out? I'm so excited if they do. I think they would look really cool. But I'm second guessing how small they are. Have you ever made macarons and sprinkled the top with cocoa? I tried sprinkling salt and it messed up the tops. Um, there's definitely really salt messed up the tops. There's some things that I've tried sprinkling on that have worked. Um, things that are, you know, cocoa powder. I would just do after because it sticks on pretty well. Um, but I've done cinnamon and it works. Coconut, you have to be careful with because it's oily or any type of nut like pistachio. I just make sure I roast them before to kind of get the oils out. So, but not too much because you don't want them to burn while they bake again. So you kind of have to be careful with toppings. I feel like with the no rest method, you can put more toppings on without worrying about them cracking. But when the oil rests on the top of the shell, they get really um, fragile. And that's when you get those cracks, like the oil just kind of breaks down that shell while it's resting and then you get the cracked macarons. So if you're able to get them to work with no rest, try adding the toppings again and you'll be blown away that it works way better with no resting. Guys, who wants to look in the oven to see if they are cracking? I'm sweating so much. I'm like, whew. Ah, oh, you stop singing. It's like if I'm by myself, this is what I do, and then I'm just getting in the zone. Um, in oven, how hot, how long? <laughs> Thank you for understanding, Caroline. Caroline? Caroline. Um, my oven is at, set at 300. So, I, but I put it down to like 295 when I put my, my tray in. So I want it to stay around 305 in my oven with these air bake trays. With this one, I'll drop my oven temperature down to 275 if I don't have my insulated air bake tray. And I'm also gonna completely rest these ones. So I won't put this second tray in unless I use an air bake tray for my second tray. 
which for some reason I just grabbed a small tray, um, then I'll rest them completely. If I grab an air bake tray for my second tray, then I'll just pop them in and not worry about having them completely dry. Okay. I'm gonna let these rest. We have eight seconds, so perfect. We can check in on the other max. They smell kind of like they're burning, so that's always fun. They've got some feet. Okay, so I put it on for six more minutes just because these are a little bit thinner and they are um, they're thinner and like not the same size, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna check it 16 minutes and see how they are. I don't want them to be too browned just because I'm not too worried about the whiteness, but I just don't want them browned so because I, I want the watercolor to look really nice. Um, so we'll check in six. My oven temperature spiked in the oven. It said it was 325. So I put down my outside temperature to 285. So hopefully my oven can regulate itself and stick around 300. So my goal is to keep my oven, internal oven temp around 300. And then, you know, I kind of have to babysit it depending on what's happening in the environment. Okay, just tuning in. Hi, Fatima. How do you make, how do you make white macarons stay white after baking? So we were talking about that. There's certain pastes, um, there's like um, Wilton white icing. Some people use that. You can use it in your batter. I like to use powdered colors. I've used Americolor what, Super White, I think it is, but it's my batch at least was really runny, so it always messed up my shells. So I've always gravitated towards titanium dioxide powders like Chef Master or Chef, nope, not Chef Master, Chef Rubber or the Sugar Art. Um, Puna, is, did you say that you, you use a gel paste? Is that what you were saying I do? She uses foil. Oh yeah. Um, yes, you can use parchment over it or foil, um, and, but don't put it on top of your macarons till the feet have kind of solidified. So just the last few minutes of baking or else your feet won't grow. Probably a newbie question. Could I have frozen guava pulp? Um, Steffi, I would say yes. Pulp usually freezes pretty well. I think like concentrated juices freeze great, so why not pulp? Um, but yeah, I think you could have definitely frozen those if you're using it for a buttercream. How would you recommend I use it for either? Um, you could add it into a white chocolate ganache. I'm trying to think. Guava. Is it guava? Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, you weren't asking if you could freeze it. You were just asking how to use it. My apologies. Would you recommend? I think you could use it for either, honestly. Um, for the buttercream, just put it in and, you know, if it's really, really runny, you might need to reduce it down, but you don't want to lose the freshness of it. So I hate reducing down um, liquids when it's going into a buttercream just because it usually gets like that jammy flavor. So you have to be super careful if you want to reduce it or you can or do super low and slow if you want to reduce it. If you're doing a butter, uh, a ganache, just make sure you don't heat it up too much and lose some of the flavor too and brightness. Yeah, 
champion. That's a great idea. Um, how do you make sure? Yeah, let's see. Um, I think it was 59 grams sugar. What did I say? 84? I think I did 84 for this grams of almond flour. And 85 grams of confectioner sugar. Okay, there's the recipe. And I, I think I have some more batter. I'll just do a couple circles. I talk, a, I've talked a lot on Instagram about this brand of parchment, Just Fine Best. It's a family owned business and I love that it comes flat. In, in pastry school, we had like flat um, blocks of parchment as well that fit already perfectly in your um, sheet pans. There we go, sorry about all the us. And so it's just really nice and convenient. You don't have to worry about them flipping up. So if, you, if you've if you been looking for a brand and they're not bleached, so it's better for the environment. And um, you can use Baked Toujours at checkout for 10% off. Um, Sugarholic Girl also has it. Whisk also has it. Christina from Christina's, Christina's Mac Macarons by Christina has it. So there's lots of people who have promo codes. So don't purchase it without just putting a promo code in just to get 10% off, which helps with shipping. Um, but yeah. Uh, I am still learning how to bake on those. Yeah, so Nazanin, you you get really tall feet with them. They seem done, but I'm gonna do one more minute. Yeah, so it's just kind of nice. I'm just gonna do circles on these. But um, I, I appreciate that they're better for the environment than white parchment. But, you know, parchment is parchment, and it won't keep your circles as beautifully as your silicone mat. So it's really up to you and what your preference is. But I do get fuller shells with the, with the parchment because it's a better conductor of heat than silicone. And I, when I use Teflon, I like Teflon too, but I just get really tiny feet with Teflon, which is the opposite of what I would think. So I don't usually use it. Yeah, and hollow. Oh, interesting, hollow and tall. Oh, I mean, that makes sense for a lot of people get the tall hollow. Yeah. Maybe you might need a lower temperature. What temp were you baking at, Nazanin? All right, so I just have a few. I'm not even gonna pound my tray, so they keep their circular shape a little bit better. You, yeah, I get fuller shells, I know. And 280 isn't too high, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, they're a little fragile. We'll see. I'm going to take it out. 17 minutes. My oven shut up a little bit, so they browned quite a good bit, but these aren't meant to be white, so I'm not worried about it. How long do you mix everything together? Denise, you mean like um, the macronage process or the part where I am mixing the egg whites? There we go. Meringue. I couldn't think of the word. Says about five minutes. Let me see. Okay, let's get started on 
Um, I'm going to let the other tray dry. Well, let's check. This was the second tray we piped out. They're almost completely dry, a little bit tacky still from the one, the last ones I piped. So I'm going to wait like five more minutes for those. And we don't necessarily have to, like I, I don't need to show you um, the watercolor effect on those ones. So don't worry, we're not going to be here for like three hours. Um, the oven temperature is around 300. Here we go. So we got this little, like, pow I don't know, little holes to put colors in. I, again, I said you can use extracts or high, um, high alcohol, like uh, vodka. These things do evaporate, so you might need to add more as you go. So I'm just going to put an eyedropper and kind of fill each one with some almond extract. We want to have our macarons cool before we do any of the painting. So, okay, rainbow is what, six colors? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's perfect. I'm just gonna mix in a drop of each color and see how we're doing. Um, I have like a whole bunch of array of like random brushes, mostly Wilton brand. So I'm gonna use just random ones, I'm trying to get the bigger ones for these since I don't want like too small. This one is a new one from Sweet Sticks um, from Bean and Butter, but I just want to wait to use this one on like fine details. Um, someone did that, so I'm just gonna Big shanky shark, really cool. Hide user, put user in timeout maybe. Okay, so we are going to add, so I've got a mixture of different colors here. Yeah, paint tray, thank you, macro maker. I'm gonna put a drop of red, a drop of all the colors. We've got Americolor and Chef Master here mostly. Can you guys see this? Oh, too much. So, orange. Oh, tell me I have orange left. Let's see. Let's let it sit upside down for a second. This is gonna be fun if I'm all out of these ones. <laughs> I know I've got green. Oh, came out so nice and fast. Blue. Kick them out. Yeah, I tried. Blue and purple. Oh, too much purple. That's okay. We can dilute. I guess I can get like a toothpick. Okay, guys. If it doesn't mix well because they're not water-based, I'm just gonna use the, the leftover water, not the paste that's in there. Um, so some of them, like some gels, mix in really nicely and other ones get clumpy and maybe that's a sign of it being old, I don't know. Kinda gross. So if you can see here, just kinda mixing them in and I'm gonna try hard, hard, hard to get out some orange and yellow. I just have a little eyedropper. All right, cross your fingers for me. I'm gonna stop I can use some sugar art if I don't have enough of this. I got a little yellow I'm making a disaster maybe wear gloves when you do this a 
Okay guys, let's try this out. So we've got our red, our orange, our yellow, green, blue, and purple or violet. And we're just going to paint. Our... I'm gonna start at the top with red and go down from there. See if they're actually dry first, huh? Shall we do that? Or cooled, I mean. It sounds like they're like having fun as well as getting destroyed at the same time. Okay, so there's our little popsicle. <laughs> Would you be able to tell that this is even a popsicle? There we go. So, it's kind of funny. Again, if you're making these for other people or just to keep your hands clean, gloves might be better. All right, so I'm gonna just have them down. I'm gonna put you guys down. Let's see what these, let's see how these turn out, okay? So, we've got a few. You wanna do both sides, right? So let's do red. And again, this is um, extract, so it's going to dry out quickly, so it's not going to be too wet on our, it's going to um, not wet, wet our shell. Does that make sense? Wet our shell? Is that, what am I trying to say, you guys? It's not going to be too moist on the top of our shell. I think I'm going to need it fatter, huh? I didn't. <laughs> I only have three more. Okay. Red needs to be thicker. Orange needs to be thicker. This is a tester. Red. This is so fun. Even though I don't, I'm not like artistic. It's just fun to paint something. I feel like I'm watercoloring with my kids. Yellow. So I guess you'd want to go about halfway down with the first three colors and then do the other three colors. And it's a little fatter at the bottom, so depending on if you want, how you want to even them out. Right now we've got red. I can't really see with the coloring, can you? Green. I chose a forest green. Maybe I should have gone with mint green. Is it green next? It is, right? I might use just some extract at the end to kind of blend them. Green, blue. No, I like the forest green. Okay, purple, excuse me while I have very elementary ideas of fun because I am not an artist. All right, again, gloves. Really recommend gloves. So there's that. It's kind of hard to see, huh? But let's get just some extract. And see if that kind of blends it in a little bit. 
Hey, Michelle. Now, in the picture that I had, it kind of drips. So I wonder if I can do a little drippy drip of the red down or if it won't translate. I don't think it'll translate. It's just gonna look messy. Okay. So for now, I'm gonna just have those be like that. Purple. Orange. All right, I'll work on it. This one's orange. You guys, I'm so good at this, aren't I? This one was green, wasn't it? This one's blue. This one was plain. What's this one? Okay, I'll keep going. Let me do, I, I lost my red. This one's red. Guys, I'm so good at this. Joke. So, basically, a little less. I think I need more extract in these because they're way too dark. But how fun to make your rainbow. And then play around with how to make them look. Kind of blended and fun. Yeah, this one's turning out better. This one's turning out way better. guys help each other out. I'll answer questions in a second. I just want to get one done and then um, I can fill it. There. Doesn't look at all like it, but we'll see. After doing a little bit more work, I'll play around with them. It's fun, but it's not really coming out like I thought it would. I think it would be better with a larger macaron, but maybe once they're sandwiched, they'll look nice. I'm not even gonna get a piping bag right now. I just wanna show you guys. And I can't wait to try it because I feel like it might not taste good, you know? I wanna know if these extracts taste okay before really recommending it, but so much easier with a piping bag. These are so tiny. It's still wet, but for time's sake, I'm trying to go fast. So I would let these completely cool, obvious, I mean, completely, um, completely dry before filling. Especially because like I'm getting it on my stick. But there you go. Yeah. Pris um, hello, Prasanna. Prasanna, am I saying that right now? Now I haven't said it for a long time. There, it's like a mini stick. Isn't that cute? Guys, it could be done so much better. I need to play around with it. Maybe um, dilute a lot more so it looks more watercolory. But you know, it's not supposed, it doesn't necessarily need to be a super clean look because they're supposed to melt together. But I'll work on it. Maybe get some good photos. What do you guys think? Rosna, yeah, is that, cause 
We've missed you, Razna. <laughs> I messaged you on IG. I'm so glad to see you're doing well or you're here. So I've made a big mess, but that's that's it. I'm no I'm not gonna do much more right now because of the state of my kitchen. But I like it too. Thank you, Macaron Maker. I feel like you guys could do a really good job, way better job. And I bet someone else has done this before, so it's not like I'm inventing this, but I just loved the inspo on Pinterest, and I think it's really fun making it um, summery or for Pride Month next month, whatever you might want to do. Um, I filled this with cookies and cream, but just because I had it in my house, but I think it would be, look at how cute and small it is, it's like my earrings and my um, cookies and cream, buttercream, but I'm going to make a mango buttercream maybe for these ones, or even, I, I got some blood orange and champagne flavoring. I don't drink, but a mimosa -y kind of thing would be fun for this summer. So, we'll see. I am definitely just did the, the cookies and cream for the demo, and I'm going to make some more buttercream. Something fruitier after I paint all of these, and then fill, uh, let them dry, and then fill. So, miss you too. Hope you're getting the needed R&R. Much needed r and R. I don't know. I don't know how to talk, guys. I'm so glad to see you in here, Rosna. Um, thanks for being here, Betty. Thanks for the good luck. I needed it. Yeah, the flavors could be really fun. I haven't ever tried this brand of flavoring. I just usually use um, their colorants. So I'm excited to try. They smell really good. A blood orange champagne uh, buttercream sounds delicious. Yay, Betty, thank you. Yeah, it's cute. Now I just need to make more. Mm -hmm. But either way, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I won't keep you guys much longer. What brand are they? Um, the flavorings are Chef Rubber. I'm gonna work on these, dilute my coloring colors a little bit more. I only put one, one um, squeeze of each thing in, and they're just too saturated. So I'd put more um, extract in and try them again and kind of blend the colors a little bit better. But due to time, this is what I got, and that's it's fun. How does it taste? You want me to taste it now while it's still wet? To be honest, I have a really sensitive palate to, um, I have a really sensitive palate to like the bitterness of flavorings. And because I have mixed it with almond, I taste only almond extract while it's still wet. So it tastes like almond extract. It doesn't taste bitter at all, but as they dry, it could be different. So I'll get back to you on how they taste after dried, because nobody wants to eat a dis like a bitter macaron. You know, like some bitterness is great if it's the right kind of bitterness, but not from your colorings. Yeah, the kids could have so much fun with these, right? My mouth is like all colored now. Okay, guys. Yeah, you could use you could use um, clear vanilla for sure. You could use lemon extract if you want like more of. You're gonna be doing a lemon flavor anyways. Um, and again, alcohol is like the best option. Uh, vodka, because it supposedly doesn't taste and it dries off really quickly too. So uh, up to you guys on what you use. You could try water, but just be super careful when mixing and putting water on top of your macaron shells. Check out Michelle's Macarons watercolor floral demonstration video um, for more information on how to use water on top of them. Okay. 
that's it for now. That's it and that's all. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. I'm going to make more. I'll take a nice picture, hopefully, and I will use it as a new thumbnail for this. And I'll also share on Instagram and um, the newsletter how it tastes afterwards, if it dries nicely and whatnot. I know, it's so good to see Razna. I didn't want to make you blush too much, so, but we miss you and I hope you're doing well. Ian, thank you for being here. Helene, hello, thanks for being here. Caroline, you too have a great weekend and thank you for joining the live. It's always fun to connect with people on Instagram and then have them say they're coming to the live and see them in the chat. So thanks for being here, you guys, and thanks for creating a fun environment, even when I started off very flustered. Sorry, Karen, but there it will stay on. Um, just watch late. I know it is a bummer, though, because I love when people can contribute to the chat. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> Have a good day, Betty. Enjoy your three-day weekend to um, um, the American, uh, the United States people, the U.S. of A. What are we called? Oh my gosh, I'm like being very. To those in the United States, have a great Memorial weekend. To my Canadian friends, I hope you guys had a great three uh, long weekend as well for last weekend. Okay, I'm just making it work, so I'm gonna say goodbye. Have a good one, you guys.